Today is March 9th, 2021. My name is Maria Briseño. I'm interviewing Mrs. Legacy for the University Library's Specialty Collections and Archives at the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley, hereafter abbreviated as UTRGV. The project is in partnership with the Voices of Oral History Center at the University of Texas at Austin. Please note, Mrs. Legacy, that this interview will be placed in the University Library Special Collections and Archives at UTRGV and shared with the Voices Oral History Center at the University of Texas at Austin. If there is anything you do not wish to answer or talk about, I will honor your wishes. Also, if there is something you want to talk about, please bring it up and we'll talk about it. The University Library Specials Collections and Archives will archive your interview along with any other photographs and other documentation you are willing to share. UTRGV University Library will retain copyright or non-exclusive rights to the interview and any other materials you donate to Special Collections and Archives at UTRGV. Because we are not conducting this interview in person, I need to record you consenting to make sure you agree with our interview procedures before we continue. So I'll ask you a series of six questions. Please say, yes, I agree, or no, I do not agree after each question. Do you give University Library Special Collections and Archives at UTRGV consent to archive your interview and your materials at the UTRGV University Library? Yes. Do you grant UTRGV University Library Specials Collections and Archives right, title, and interest in copyright over the interview and any materials you provide? Yes. Do you agree to allow UTRGV University Library Special Collections and Archives to post this interview on the internet where it may be viewed by people around the world? Yes. Do you grant the University Library Special Collections and Archives consent to share your Zoom interview with the Voices Oral History Center at the University of Texas at Austin for inclusion in the Voices of a Pandemic Oral History mini project, which will include posting the interview on the internet? Yes. Okay. As you recall, we previously filled out a pre-interview form. We used information from the pre-interview form to help in research. The entire form is kept in a secure VOSIS server at the University of Texas at Austin. Before VOSIS sends it UTRGV University Library Special Collections and Archives, we would have stripped out any contact information for yourself or family members so that you will, so that will not be part of your public profile. Your public profile will only be accessible at UTRGV University Library. The final two questions ask you for the consent on that is what I described. Do you wish for us to share the rest of your interview in your public file available to researchers at UTRGV University Library Specials Collections and Archives? Yes. On occasion, UTRGV Special Collections and Archives and Voices receives requests for journalists who wish to contact, to contact our interview subjects. We only deal with legitimate news outlets. Do you give consent for us to share your phone numbers or your email with journalists? Email, yes. Okay. Thank you for your consent. Your experiences and stories mean a lot to us at UTRGV Special Collections and Archives. I look forward to what you say in the interview questions. I will now ask. Okay. okay, perfect. All right. Okay, Mrs. Legacy, thank you for your time. Like I said earlier, your stories and experiences are valuable to us at UTRGV Special Collections and Archives and the Voices Project. Particularly for us at UTRGV Special Collections, we are committed to preserving the stories of Mexican Americans and Latinos from South Texas and the Rio Grande Valley and those who work closely with these populations during this COVID-19 pandemic. Because you are a police officer who cares for the physical safety and mental well-being of her community in the McAllen, Texas area and the lower Rio Grande Valley, 
because you are a daughter, sister, and friend who is knowledgeable of the ways COVID-19 has affected others in her inner circle. I know you have a meaningful stories and experiences to share on how COVID-19 has impacted these roles you carry out in your everyday life, okay? So before I ask you to share stories about your life in this pandemic, tell us a little bit about who Mrs. Legacy is. Okay, um, what do I start with? <laughs> um, Anything you'd like to share? Do you want me? <laughs> do you right? But do you want me to start off from like uh, from how I started my journey at the PD, or how I um, just a little bit about yourself? Like I, I know that we are uh, omitting a lot right now. Uh, just right. tell us a little bit about yourself, just in a nutshell. Okay, so I am a mother of three. I am 38 years old. Um, my husband works away. I am a police officer. I am, well, I wanna say I'm a detective. I'm behind a desk. Um, so that's what I do. That is my primary job. I also am an owner um, to a tax firm, tax firm and a notary. Um, and I also own some property that I do lease. So my life is pretty busy. Um, I also have to tend to my family as well and make time for them. And um, uh, that's that in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> All right, perfect. Thank you so much for sharing that information with us. So we're just going to go ahead and go into um, some personal understandings about the COVID and your first encounters. Um, so the first question I do want to ask you is, when did you first hear about COVID-19 and how did you learn about it? Was it through radio, TV, children, your social media, or et cetera? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think it was a little, a little bit of everything, um, obviously. Um, strong, uh, and uh, that's where I believe I obviously came as well. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, you're breaking up just a little bit. And also the news. Okay. I'm sorry. You were breaking up real bad on that one. Okay. Okay. How or where I heard of COVID. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. So that one. Um, so I said that um, social media is a very strong platform, right? Uh, Facebook and whatnot. So um, I did uh, hear about COVID there. I also heard about COVID at work. Obviously, a lot of people heard about COVID um, at their workplace, okay, um, uh, and also on the news. All righty. Um, what was your first reaction to the information about COVID when it was first coming out? I'm sure I, re I reacted like a lot of people did. I, to me, it was not as serious uh, or a, I, I guess, I mean, we've never experienced a pandemic here. At least I didn't. Um, I don't consider the flu a pandemic either. So uh, to me, it was, it, it, it wasn't really that big of a deal since I'm, I'm a germaphobe, right? So to me, it was, well, I mean, wash your hands, right? You cover your cough, you cover your sneeze, and that's, that's that. Um, yes, taking your regular precautionary measures, yeah. Yes, measures. Okay. Now, at what point did you realize that this pandemic was a serious life-altering event, or do you not think it's serious and why? Mm -hmm. um, I, I want to say that when I, when I thought that it was uh, serious is obviously when we started uh, to have several um, uh, several people passing away, right? Um, just like everybody else. Um, that's when I thought that, you know, that that's when I, I knew that, okay, something's wrong. We need to take action, right? 
and um, and I was one of those, you know, uh, using precautionary measures. I was always uh, I was living in a, a little bubble yeah. myself. I know I told you that a couple of days ago. Yes. Um, I, I I even though I would still sanitize my areas, that was just me cleaning my areas. Um, I I went overboard. I mean, I just like I said, I lived in a bubble. Yes. All right. Now, over the last few months, what news media, social media, or other sources do you rely on to keep you informed about coronavirus? Mm -hmm. uh, pretty much Facebook. That's what it is. All right, perfect. Um, can you share with me what you understand about COVID-19 as an infectious disease and any of its variants? Likewise, you can share with me what you don't understand about this new coronavirus. Uh-huh. There's, there's, I don't think we, anybody knows what the coronavirus is to the T. I don't think anybody is fully um, educated on it. There's always something new coming up, right? And still to this day right now. Um, to me, there was just a lot of questions, right? So when I started hearing about it mutating and this and that, at, and then once I came down with COVID and then my family members started coming with down with COVID and I, I you know, to me, it was just, I, I just didn't get it. How come you're getting it this way and I'm, I'm getting the symptoms and you're not and I'm really, really sick and you're not and, you know, just, just that kind of number. It was just, it's, it's something uh, very, um, uh, how could I put it, very out of this, this, something very different we've that no one's no. ever experienced before so. mm -hmm. yes and it's it's kind of like that with like the different strains and everybody reacts differently and it, it just it's so hard for anybody to understand it you know and every right. day there's a different strain coming out so I understand that confusion on that um now, can you tell me what you know about the various vaccines available to the public and how do you feel about these vaccines? <sighs> okay, <laughs> for, as for that, yeah. Um, the only three obviously that I know, right? And that I know that are out there. Um, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be straightforward. I am not a strong believer of the, these vaccines. I know people are getting also sick as well. To my understanding or my knowledge, what, what I was told that is that apparently it's not the actual virus that's being injected to, you know, to the people or to the person. Um, so I really, to be honest with you, I'm not like that, that educated with those. Um, I didn't look into it. The, I, I, I want to say that I did that because I, I didn't care much to know about the, the vaccine since I had already come down with COVID myself. So, and I am not a strong believer of vaccines. I do know, and I re I recognize that, you know, even at, at birth, right? And then they, days old, you have to go through some vaccines. It's, it's a must, right? Um, it, it's out there, you need a vaccine. Now there are also um, ways of rejecting vaccines, but as far as going back to the, the, the COVID, vaccine I, I refuse to, to I refuse to get vaccinated that's just me okay now do you have a vaccination story you would like to share with me now or perhaps later in this interview uh, vaccination story of not COVID, of anything, just not of anything. Of COVID. Mm -hmm. well okay well my father-in-law did come down mm -hmm. with um, his immune system actually was shot right um, with e, with the, the flu shot. So just days after, or maybe just days prior of being uh, injected with the flu shot um, or given that vaccination, that's when he came down with COVID. Uh, so to me, I, I just, I, I, I couldn't bear the fact that he had actually gone through it when he told me that he had um, received the uh, flu shot. I. I, I was in shock <laughs> and I told him, I said, I remember telling him, uh, why did you, or asking him, why did you do this, right? Why did you, why did you let them uh, vaccinate you? And he said, well, um, they told me I had to, since he is a kidney, uh, 
uh, he was a kidney transplant, um, uh, Donor? what do you call it? No, uh, no, no, receiver. A recipient. So had, a recipient, yes. He had just received uh, a kidney transplant. He had gotten just his kidney mm -hmm. transplant. It's been, what, two years since, since that. And um, because he had been a renal patient for so many years. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Um, so shortly after, just days later, he started getting very, very sick. Um, and then that's when he found that he, he was, uh, he had gotten COVID. That must have been really, really hard on you. I, and any family member coming in contact with it would be right. very, very rough. Um, now, do your family members hold the same beliefs? as you about COVID-19, are there some who take it more seriously or some that take it more lightly? Mm -hmm. I, I think we've all, I think we all think the same. It's just, you know, maintain your distance. We've all agreed that we, we are the only ones that we um, uh, come in contact with or visit closely not come in contact because obviously you're at the grocery store and you can come in contact with anybody, right? Um, but uh, we were only in that, like I said, in that little bubble. I, I at the very beginning, uh, decided to, to pretty much just maintain my distance and not visit my parents as, as, as often or get together with my family. Um, little by little, as soon as we all started getting, um, coming down with the virus, I, I'm, I'm not going to say all of us because my, my brother and his girlfriend didn't come down with it. Mm -hmm. um and then uh two of my other sisters didn't come down but the ones that, or us that did um after that we we started to uh um just visit more frequently but we knew that it was just us that uh we were visiting uh but from the very beginning i was i was staying away from my parents for the same reason now uh now, mind you, I, I did not give my parents COVID. <laughs> they got it through another source. Um, and I know that because obviously at that time I was maintaining my distance given the fact that I am a first responder and that obviously I would come in contact with a lot of people. Yes, yes. And, and that's completely understandable that you wanna just keep that distance away and, um, and protecting your family, you know? And like for the next couple of questions that I'm gonna be submitting to you, it is gonna relate more into your family. Um, uh -huh. I'd like to talk about how you've seen COVID-19 affect family members, friends, and equal important because you are a first responder and have contracted the virus firsthand. We will go over your routines and the struggles you face during this pandemic. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you did mention that your husband, he works out of town. Um, right. Did he or anyone he knows contract the virus where he, where, were there precautions that he had to take um, where he works at? Um, yes, he does uh, work away. He, he leaves home two weeks, comes back home two weeks. But um, yes, there's uh, some that came in contact with it, but um, that was after he had come down with the COVID himself. Um, that was months into or after. Um, but yes, he did say um, that um, a coworker, uh, one of the engineers uh, had come down with COVID and uh, the whole, almost the whole two weeks that she was there, uh, mind you, they share, or no, they don't share, They they they're in this data van that's not a very big um place uh or building um and um but but i was told that you know they were using the plexiglass they were using the face masks they had um all this um ppe equipment so even with all that ppe equipment they still all seem to contract the virus right Right. Um, just that one engineer. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, he didn't. He didn't uh, come down with it. As soon as he got home, um, he 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 didn't. He did. He went straight to the parking lot of a clinic to wait for the COVID test. Him, him along with his uh, coworker, um, that uh, pretty much um, uh, carpool. Okay. They went straight to, yeah, I remember that they, they, 
they were supposed to get home at about four in the morning. They didn't, he didn't get home till like almost eight or nine in the morning. Oh, wow. Uh, and, and he, yeah, they decided to sleep inside the vehicle and wait outside in the parking lot of this clinic to wait their turn to get uh, tested. Oh, wow. But those are all the little precautions that you still have to like take. Right. right. Although, although we still had contracted the virus, he was mm -hmm. still, he was, I mean, he was still taking those measures. Yes. Okay. Now, um, during our pre-interview, you did mention that you had a routine. Um, since I know that you you would go out and you would work in the field and you would come home. Now, tell me the steps that you would take to make sure your family was safe. Okay. So my routine was this. Um, I do use a, um, I use um, a vehicle, obviously, that belongs to the agency. I don't use my personal vehicle, which is a big plus. Okay. So yes, I did carry Lysol and hand sanitizer and gloves and um, face masks inside that, um, that unit. Um, but, and I was pretty much wearing the same thing. I would, uh, as soon as I would get home inside the garage, take off my boots, sanitize them, leave them outside. Uh, my boots got so worn out of so much spray. Um, I they would leave them out there. Uh, as soon as I would get, get home, uh, my, my girls already knew that mom was coming home don't get close to mom, stay inside your rooms, don't come out. Um, I usually had a bucket with water, a mop and bleach ready to go. Um, I would get into the laundry room because my house uh, is set up that way, the layout of my house. There's a garage, my home office, a full restroom and then my laundry. So I would go straight to the laundry room, take my, my clothes off, throw it in the washer, uh, wash it, um, get it started, right? Uh, put on a robe and then start uh, mopping the, the entire area uh, of where I had actually made my entry into my house. And then I would sanitize my equipment. Uh, I would leave it there to air dry. And then I would um, go uh, straight into the shower. I would not get close to my girls until I was completely um, ready to go showered and whatnot. Um, mind you, the rope would go into the washer as well. <laughs> the washer, my hair tie, I was that bad. My hair tie would also go into the washer. Um, and then I would wash my hands again. And then I would pick up my equipment, put it away, obviously put my, my gun, my holster away and whatnot. And then my girls were ready to be around mom. So that was my routine. My clothes, once it was ready uh, out of the washer, put it in the dryer, and then I would just leave it there um, and it was ready to go for the next morning. But yeah, I was pretty much doing that every single day. That would take me at least a good 30 to 45 minutes just because I was being extra cautious. <laughs> and then, uh, being a mom, you have to, you have to try to watch out for your children as much as you can. And yes, it, it's hard. Yes. Yes, I agree. Mm -hmm. So it was just this regimen that I had religiously. And like I said, I lived in a bubble and yet I still contracted the virus. It was just, it was, it was crazy. crazy. Yes. Like I said, there's still so much about this virus that we, we still don't know. And it's insane. I guess like the more you're trying, the more it, it's, it still is going to come out either way, you know, and it's, that's the scary part about it that we don't know. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, now I know that you had told me that you had contracted the COVID-19. Um, what were your, your symptoms and how did you find out that you were positive? Mm -hmm. So I contracted the virus in July. Um, I want to say it was uh, mid to, yeah, mid July. Um, I started, I was working graveyard, um, graveyard for me is, you know, uh, 10 p.m. to 6 a.m., and uh, I was sitting on my, at my uh, desk, my computer. It was only me there in my, in my department. It was only me there, um, luckily, right? And um, I, I started to feel very, very dizzy, very dizzy. I mean, I mean, this computer, everything was spinning. And then um, I started to feel chills. Um, 
And um, I thought to myself, well, I'm just tired, right? It's the graveyard shift. It's already, you know, pain a, uh, a toll on me. And let me just get up, go to the restroom and I'll be right back. Well, as I was going to the restroom, I started to, I mean, feel more dizzy. I went back to my desk and then I started to feel more chills. And I said, no, I'm done. So I had a thermometer with me. That's how bad I was, right? I, I checked my, my temperature and sure enough, I was ready to low grade fever yeah and um that's that's what i felt at the beginning i went to go tell my supervisor uh, or one of the supervisors in patrol and um and then from there that was it um the next i want to say the next day or a day or two later obviously the setup wasn't all that great just yet right uh in july uh so i I was um, I was scheduled to go in and, and test one of those mornings. Mm -hmm. And mind you, it was taking a while to get results also. So yeah, it, it, it didn't have none time. of the rapid. <laughs> no, no rapid, no nothing. So um, I wasn't on meds, right? Oh, I think you're on mute, media. Um, Ms. Legacy. I believe, sorry, there was, I was getting a phone call. Oh, no, um, it's okay. So, uh, which is why I believe that I was more sick because I just, I, I just didn't, um, I just didn't take care of it soon. Yes. Well, it was still in the beginning preliminary stages of it. And it was just the unknown and still figuring out going into steps. Exactly. I mean, that was back in July that, I mean, from then to now the, the measures have gone tremendously different you know right. i know that when i went to go to get tested it was done real quick and then now they even have the blood and the swab so it's just kind of like oh you right know. it's one of those rapid testing so yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. now when you found out that you had contracted the covid um 19 um how did your family respond to you having the virus and did you self-quarantine yourself with your children or how did how did you go about that yeah well <laughs> my mom was freaking out let me tell you because my mom has helped me watch my little one since she was a newborn so she's helped me raise her because obviously you know because of the job that i have um so she was freaking out. My mom was freaking out. My parent, my both my parents were freaking out. Um, my husband had just come. My husband had just arrived. That's right. He had just arrived. Um, I think he had been home maybe two days, if I want to say. Well, I mean, that was that. I thought that by me quarantined in my bedroom and then him sleeping either in the couch or in another bedroom. Um, and using the other restrooms that we have there in the home that he wouldn't contract it. But he, I mean, he ended up getting uh, COVID as well. It's, it's, it's just um, once your family member has it, that's it. I mean, I don't care how big your house is, uh, but the virus is there. Um, so it was that easy for him to, to get it. And so did my little one. Um, and yeah. but yes we did we did uh quarantine we stayed home no one was allowed to leave the house and no one was coming to my house either okay and that's understandable i mean it's the best way to be you know um now remember at, at the beginning i did advise you that if there was anything you don't want to talk about we don't have to talk about you can just say um i don't want to speak about it um at any time okay um now you did mention that you lost your father-in-law uh, yes, during yes. the pandemic, and it was a difficult time. What were the restrictions that were enforced when he was in the hospital? Was there something that you wished they would have done differently? At the hospital? Mm -hmm. I, I understand, you know, the chances are high. People are not supposed to be at the hospital, but I just wish there was maybe some other uh, measure as far as um, visiting. Uh, visiting right at least one you know even if it's in you know in that bunny suit or whatever it is I feel like um, when someone is when a family member is really sick 
the one thing that they want is hear their family. I know that they were doing the they were doing the video conferencing and whatnot, but um, it's that it's not the same. No. Okay, mm -hmm. it's not the same, and I just wish that maybe something would have been done different um, as far as that is concerned, or at least have that one family member, just one, go over there and then just quarantine and and not, you know. Um, that's maybe that's just one thing that I wish that could have been done. Other than that, I mean, it was just, it's, it's, I, I can't say that I wish that they would have done something else different because they, they, them, they were also confused, you know, medical staff, um, were also, were also confused with the situation. Um, they didn't know what to do. It was, everything was so new to everyone. Yes, and that's the rough part about it. I think it's more like the comfort of not feeling alone that also takes a big toll on each yeah. of the patients. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because my, my father-in-law pulled through many times, many mm -hmm. times. I mean, like I said, he was a renal patient for, I think, a little over 10 years and um, or maybe been more than that. So um, he was diabetic, but he would control his diabetes. He was a, a very strong man. So to me, it was the, it was a shocker. You know, we talk about it. We talk about how my 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 husband would always tell him just you know just to stay home, don't go anywhere. Uh, there was other ways to get groceries. We would do stuff for them. I mean, we just wanted them to stay put. But you know, they wanted to go out. They wanted to be at the uh, the daycare. They wanted to uh, uh, socialize and whatnot. And and uh, my husband always said, you know, and he always told my my father-in-law that and my mother-in-law, you know, if you guys ever contract uh, the virus, mom, I don't think you're going to pull through. And it was the other way. It was the other way around, actually. Yeah, it's always the unexpected, you know. Yeah. No, I, I know that you mentioned earlier and even in our pre- uh, interview questions that you have two businesses that you run now because of the pandemic were they affected because of the the pandemic itself and what precautions did you take as an owner to ensure your employees were protected mm -hmm. oh yeah definitely it was uh affected and there was a, a big impact um we were i was gonna i'll say we yeah because i i to have another uh, another uh, lady that helps me, um, that works together with me. Uh, I mean, it, we were already close to the end of tax season, um, and pretty much towards the end of tax season, it's the bigger returns, the business returns, and whatnot. So um, we just had to we had to improvise and 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 take our stuff home. Uh, luckily, I've been working with a software that actually allows me to to take it with me, right? Um, I have it on my phone. I have it on my laptop. Um, I can open it up from almost just anywhere. So um, that was, I mean, we, we took everything home uh, and then just, you know, just closed the office for good. Uh, I did not, I did not, I refused to, to leave the office open, especially, you know, with me being a first responder. I knew that I eventually I was gonna catch COVID or, or, or if not catch it, but at least maybe take the, you know, the virus into my office. So I, I refused to, to continue staying open. Um, so I, I did had I did have to move. I had to move uh, uh, office equipment. I had to move supplies. Uh, a lot of stuff to to my home office. Um, luckily, I did have a spare bedroom that I had to convert into an office, and uh, and that's where I've been working out of since, actually. And even through this um, this season, I I'm still at my home office. I want to say I've only seen three clients at the office. And that's only because they just didn't want to do anything virtual. But almost every single client that I had uh, worked with me, they wanted, they, they didn't mind doing everything virtually. So that's the route we took. 
Yeah, and that's actually how, because um, I know that I had done my my taxes this year also, and everything was electronically. I didn't even have to go into the office. And I think that was one of the more stresses of like, because I mean, I know that I'm taking precautions for myself, but I don't know about the next person or the person that's helping me or, you know, and, and I mean, that's the, it would have been the, the better just thing to do in and how yes. you did do it become because you don't want to be the cause of somebody else getting exposed. Right. right. Which is what I didn't want. And that's why this tax season, I went that route as well. I said, yeah. no, I've mm -hmm. luckily I've been practicing the virtual. Uh, luckily I've been, I, I had been already practicing that because I did, I do have clients that live in the Houston area. I have clients that live in uh, uh, just out of state and, uh, and they lived here at one point, they know me and they just, they just trust me with doing their taxes. And, um, and also, uh, well, that was the tax. Um, I also uh, own property and I am, um, I have a uh, apartments, I have uh, places that I lease and that was also a little, uh, a little hit there because uh, I had tenants that couldn't afford to pay their rent. So I had to work around them. Um, I wasn't going to be giving free rents either because who was going to pay my, you know, who was going to pay my, um, my monthly uh, uh, loan, you know, mm -hmm. so what I had to do is I had to work with them, you know, payments, uh, they knew that they were still going to be due that one month, I wasn't going to charge any late fees, I was going to allow them to pay me whenever they had the money. Uh, luckily, there was only two that I had to work with. Uh, because obviously they, they couldn't go to work. They, they, they couldn't, um, uh, they couldn't afford paying their rent. So yeah. that was another thing. And if anything that we needed to go in and maybe fix or anything like that, maybe some plumbing issues or whatnot, that was also, you know, a little hard to take care of. Yes. Yeah. I mean, and, and the good thing was, is that they had y'all's help because I mean there was so many people that got affected by this COVID and lost their jobs and nobody was hiring and everything like kind of went to a standstill so I mean I'm yes. pretty sure that your your tenants did appreciate that now um how we were talking about virtual learning I know that because my children are doing it how have your children been coping with the online virtual instruction no, it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. For one, I'm not a teacher. I, I've, I'm not gonna say I haven't taught. I did teach a Sunday, a Sunday school for for several years. I, I taught like a children's church and whatnot. And I mean, I can do that that much. I virtual no. I, it was just very hard. You don't. You, First off, you don't know the, the practices or the curriculum that the school works with, okay? You're not a school teacher. I'm not a school teacher. You know, that's not my, my career. Um, so it, it, very stressful. And to this day, it still is um, just because now you're trying to get the, 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 your, your children to actually focus. It's very hard. When all of this first started in, in, in March um, and that they were forced obviously to stop school and, and stay at home. I mean, March, April, May, it was terrible. I mean, at home, um, I had to transition. I had to uh, make it fun somehow. <laughs> and with the stressors that I was going through at work, I mean, it was, it was very tough. Um, this, this school year, at least we had a little advantage, right? We knew what we we're going to get ourselves into at least. Mm -hmm. Um, but, but there was a lot, it was a lot more obviously because it's been a whole school year and, um, the teacher, you haven't even met the teacher. It's all been, you know, uh, virtual, uh, through a phone, through the phone, phone call. Um, you, we had many, there's a lot of teachers out there that are, Okay, I, I'm gonna say old school, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Not to offend anybody here, but you know, there's a lot of older teachers. I mean, they, um, 
senior teachers that um, weren't used to this. It, it was, you know, from back in the day, a chalkboard, chalkboard, you know, um, not phone. I mean, they could, they would barely use a phone, you know, imagine getting, trying to get a hold of, I, I got to see my, 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 my child's, my daughter's teacher break down in tears, okay? Just because the students would not stay still, she couldn't get their attention. It's just terrible. <laughs> and uh, I, 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 I try and I try to budge with everything that they ask for, but it is very hard, especially if you are a working parent. Yes, the, it, that I'm is one of the main. I'm always late with assignments. I've told her before, work with me. I've and she's she has she's been very very gracious, helping me. Uh, my on my days off, I tell her these are the two days that we're gonna cram homework and our homework or assignments, and this, these are the two days that we're gonna take care of it. Now, yeah. mind you. If I'm sick, if I'm down, if I'm out, if I'm, you know, I've been through surgeries, through the whole thing, right? Mm -hmm. Sick, through surgeries, uh, stomach virus. I mean, you name it. I, I don't know what is the situation here. This is, is that last year was just terrible. Um, so I imagine that, I mean, it's, I, I mean, students, I feel like students are losing on a, on a lot. Um, yes, they're young, especially mine. Mine's in first grade. She's still young. She, she'll catch up. She's very smart. She's a little sponge. So it's not going to be that hard to, to bounce back. But I feel for like the fifth grader, sixth grader, seventh graders, the ones going into high school. I have a freshman. She hasn't set foot in her high school, uh, aside from, you know, like right now that she had to go test or um, that she decided to go in and start uh, powerlifting. But um, it's just been a, it's been, it's been a horrible uh, experience. <laughs> yeah, and, and I can imagine, especially like your daughter, how you say she's barely going into high school and then not getting that experience of being the freshman, yeah, you know, yeah. like it, <laughs> it, it's something that will grow on with, you know, it's a different experience for all of these yeah. kids, you know. Um, sure. <laughs> yes. For um, sure, this is history, let me tell you. <laughs> yes, we're in the making right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so how has their school district handled instruction during this pandemic? I know you kind of touched on it right now, but yeah, that, as a school district, how have you felt them accommodations? I, you know, I, I don't have... To be honest with you, I have nothing bad to say about the school district in itself. Um, I they've tried. We've all uh, we've all tried, uh, you know, as human beings. Let me put it this way, right? Uh, nationwide, worldwide, right? Um, one way or another, we've we've accommodated. The school district in itself has tried so hard. I mean, I can I see social media. Uh, being blown up. I see um, phone calls. I'm getting phone calls and text messages and um, just ways of them getting our attention. Um, also that as far as like the, 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 the food, uh, the drives that they've conducted, uh, even as far as um, the way they, they've handled uh, delivering school material or whatnot. I mean, if we can't blame the school, you know, we, just like we can't blame any other business that had to find a way to make this work yes so i i cannot blame them they they tried so hard and i've seen it firsthand um, yes and, and even with just the uh, providing them with the computers or laptops you know no that, kidding i mean that imagine so. that <laughs> imagine <laughs> that every single student mm -hmm. we i mean me and my household you know thank god i i in my household, I want to say I have one, two, three, four, five, maybe six computers in my house, okay, to yeah. include like other devices. Mm -hmm. But I still, I, I still elected to have just one device that was going to be dedicated to the school. Yes. And that's how we worked. Mm -hmm. One device for the school, and that's it. It gets put away. We, I've ta we've taken care of it. Um, <laughs> It, because I'm, I'm grateful for that, for, for what we even have. Like I said, I mean, I've luckily I've, you know, I have Wi-Fi, I can afford it and this and that, but can you imagine these other kids that have poor reception 
Um, I, I, I mean, I, I really don't know how that, and here we are, you know, complaining. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and there's other people that have it worse. So, mm -hmm. and, and I know even in our district, I mean, they have uh, the pull up Wi Fi. Uh, for those that, yes. that don't have it, they, you're, they're able to pull up to the school and use the Wi-Fi from the school. So I yes. thought that was also, I, I see the extremities hub them trying to reach out yes. and helping the students. Right. And that is true. But then again, mm -hmm. keep in mind that there was a lot of uh, families that lost their jobs. I mean, yes. can they really afford the gas, you know, uh, taking the, the, the student being there for hours right to yep. instruct instruction I mean I don't know how that worked I'm sorry I just don't know um but the only the only thing I have to add here is that um I would get phone calls like randomly right um can you bring you know uh your daughter to come and pick up uh this and this like what do you mean like right now <laughs> I'm like um <laughs> I've, I've, um, um, I, I work, you know, there's, I, I understand that a lot of people had to stay home with their children, but I haven't, I haven't stopped working. I'm sorry. I can't take her. Hold on. Let me, let me figure it out. Let me see if my mom can go and pick this up for her. Let me see if I can get out, um, earlier to when can I pick it up? You know, stuff like that. Oh no, sorry. <laughs> that right there is the only thing that kind of got me. I was like, wait a minute. Um, I'm working <laughs> Yeah, just, or they, right they needed the additional materials or something that they needed to pick yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, that's how my son was too. Yeah, or can I go, can I go like on my day off? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that, that. Now, what struggles do you see as a parent that your children have faced so far with the distance or remote learning? Uh, with the distance and remote learning? Um, it's the, uh, the little one can't stay still. I'm going to tell you right now. I've, she's battled and she is a very smart little girl. She actually is part of the GT in school, but the fact of her just staying still is crazy. I mean, I've, I, I did as far as creating like a little um, area for her. I have this little whiteboard where she, she could, right with dry erase markers that's not there anymore it's somewhere <laughs> there in the room it's not where it was before um i i clipped her class schedule i try to make it fun and nice you know good looking i even went as far as getting her she got a new bedroom set as well last year in in the summer so i made it look very pretty she's got like her little vanity thing going on she's got her area where she's got all of her books and a little shelf down at the floor like it's like at her level um she's got like buckets of crayons markers you name it and then she's got her vanity where she has her little chair where she sits then i had like a little um uh, bean bag as well. She's had a big teddy bear where she could make that little area also like a little learning area. I have a little couch for her. It's a little, little, um, little mini recliner, you want to say, or the little couch, a little chair, armchair. There we go. And yes. it's there in the corner. I did one of those little, like, um, like, I don't know what you call it. It's those little nets that fall from the from the wall. I mean, from the ceiling that you clip, and and it's like a little net so that she could just kind of just wrap herself around there and then have that little space, you know, of her own. But <laughs> not, nothing worked. <laughs> it was. It's just a matter of of routine, and that routine. Um, it's pretty hard for her to have the routine when grandma's home, you know. Yes. And home because when mom's home is different, right? But mm -hmm. I went balls out for her, but it still didn't work. She was already like, she was already cutting Barbie's hair. Uh, one ended up being bald. <laughs> she was doing her nails. She was doing her her hair, her makeup. I mean, it was just it's it's been a little it's been an experience there. <laughs> I, I I laugh, but it's it's not. <laughs> no, I I understand that completely. And then to have a child 
even though they love electronics to actually sit in front and listen to their teacher is very, very hard for them to do. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're going to be um, giving, going into a different set of questions now. This one's going to be focusing on your job um, and procedures. Um, for It's going to focus on your stories and experiences as a first responder in the time of COVID, okay? Mm -hmm. Right. So um, just to get some backstory, how long have you been a police officer? I've been a police officer for uh, nine years. And have you always been with the same department or have you been in several different departments? No, I was a patrol officer almost five years. Mm -hmm. um, and then I became a detective um, and that's been four years since I've been in that specific uh, uh, um, uh, assignment. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what made you want to become a police officer? Well, <laughs> there's a story to that one there. <laughs> my, uh, one of my aunts from my father's side of the family she was a um she was a federal agent uh, uh she was with the marshals for when i was growing up um and i always admired her and that was just me i i i don't know why i was very attracted to to her um to her career uh of choice right so I always thought of it. Now, I did at one point want to do, um, yes, I did want a, a degree in criminal justice, but I wanted to practice law. Um, I didn't tell you that in one of our, I mean, in our pre-interview, um, but uh, I, I did want to be an attorney uh, or some something in paralegal studies, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then it just, uh, uh, when I took the job as a dispatcher, uh, 911 uh, dispatcher there at the uh, police department, that's when my my world changed. That's when I I knew that that's where I, you know that that's why I was there. You know that God had placed me there for a reason because that was that was gonna be my 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 career eventually. So. That's how it started. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so was the RGV the first place you wanted to join the police force or did you have any other options? No, I, I, I didn't want to I didn't want to leave um, the valley. I had I had just relocated from Indiana and um, I, I wanted to stay home. I didn't have any family up there, so I wanted to be home. No other choice. No That's other options either. Okay. And uh, on a daily, what are your basic roles and duties in your position? Mm -hmm. I investigate um, major crimes. Uh, That's all I'm going to say, say as far as that is concerned. <laughs> I investigate <laughs> major crimes and... Uh, <laughs> And um, it's it's a very interesting and uh, stressful position. <laughs> I mean, yeah. as an officer, you're as an officer, you're 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 put under stress daily, 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 daily. I I'm, I'm gonna lie if I say, oh, I have a day where, you know, you're perfectly fine and there's just um, no stress. That's 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 a lie. If someone says that, then I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to say there, but um, I, I do investigate those those major crimes. Then it's I just the stress that that we are are put in uh, to it. But then again, that's just my 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 career, right? What I choose to do, mm -hmm. um, what I love to do. I love to do what I do. I I love it. It's, now, what I do on the side is my passion. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've always loved serving people and helping people and, and I've always been involved in the um, 
with you know the taxes and the notary and then just helping people in in, in general right so and serving um, the community exactly mm -hmm. now you did mention in the pre-interview that you are the only female in your unit how does that make you feel and does it cause op did it cause obstacles for you in the beginning uh -huh. well at the beginning there was another female there in the the unit um we recently um uh i recently became the only one there by i want to say maybe about a, a year ago give or take um but right now yeah it's been a while i'm the the only female there in, in my unit um obstacles <laughs> i not necessarily obstacles i want to say i i since i i put in my my time there i've got my experience right um mm -hmm. i sometimes i do feel as if you know me as as a female what are you why are you deciding on this, that kind of number? Or um, I've even heard not just necessarily there from my unit per se, um, like involving my unit, um, let's say like uh, involving another uh, tactical team. Uh, I don't want a female to join the you know, the tactical team. I would hate to have a female in the tactical team. That was a conversation that I had with a colleague and um, they're from my unit, right? Um, and I, I remember asking, well, why, you know, why not? Why, what's 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 the difference? We, we made it through, we pulled through. Um, our academy is pre-military. Uh, pre so pre-military, mind you, I've never been in the military myself. So there was a lot of things that I was, um, forced to learn that I, I had to pick up on. So to me was why why not a female in the tactical team? What's what's so wrong with it, right? Well, I would hate for the regimen to change or the structure of the um of of the training that we go through. And I remember telling this colleague, um there's nothing wrong with it. I mean we've we, we've managed, we as females managed um, to pull through the uh, the police academy. What makes you think that, that we can't pull through? Now, not only that, I did tell him, um, us females, I can name you several females in the force that can actually do more or pull through more than 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 any uh, or many of of the team members in in that tactical team i remember saying um so and so can't even run <laughs> so and so can't even carry his own body weight you know <laughs> so what's the difference what's the difference it's just that the, the mere fact that don't push, you know you're a female and just the changes that can actually um happen but um just the um and I, and I for, yes, I, I speak for for a lot of the other females that we have in the force. Um, we're there for a reason. Um, had had there not been been any females in in the force, there's there would have been a lot of uh, females not coming forward and 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 uh, uh, reporting abuse. A lot of children are scared of of speaking up. Right, a lot of uh, runaways, you know, uh, not listening to to the male figure, right? So I remember when I was in in patrol, you know, I I, I was I was more inclined to to the youth, you know, I I loved talking to them and encouraging them, um, but I don't I don't see why talking about the the female right figure here, I don't see why why um why is that thinking you know i do i i do understand and i know that the male strength is completely different from the female strength god made us different right for a reason but we're there for a reason and if we've pulled through from the very beginning what makes them think or what makes this particular person think that we will not be able to pull through 
That's very, very true. Right now, um, I know that due to your due to COVID and the pandemic, how has your job been impacted, and what has changed in 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 your job? Mm -hmm. Well, the way the way um, the way um, I want like, to say the way we interview people that's changed the way we 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 talk to people. I mean. <sighs> Just, just that, basically, just that because I mean, we pretty much continue. Like I said, we we continued working. We we've never stopped. If you have to respond, you have to respond. That's that's it. But I mean, the way of interviewing people, maybe that would be the only difference. I want to say. I mean, aside from work, I mean the work work. Work related, yes, but as far as like going out and sitting down at a, at a, at a restaurant and eating, that that stopped. Mm -hmm. We we were we were picking up food, bringing our food from home, and eating there at our tables, or at or at our desks. You know, mm -hmm. um, I, that's pretty much the only thing that changed. Now, during COVID, I know that many things changed. You know, how did the P PD transition to those changes um, when everything um, was needing to get altered? Mm -hmm. uh, well, just like any other business, right? Um, the, the sanitizing uh, portion, uh, everyone had to be wearing a face mask. We were uh, keeping our, our distance. Uh, our meetings were no longer as um, uh, as enclosed. Not as not as not as, not as long. Mm -hmm. um, not, yes, not as enclosed or not as often either. Uh, anything that we had to say to one of the, I remember supervisors going to uh, uh, one on one to each office individually and and kind of uh, briefing, hey, this is what happened in the meeting and this is what we need to tell you. And it's just pretty uh, repetitive. But uh, but as far as um, equipment, uh, masks, I remember them being very scarce. Uh, the PD had to get masks there. We had to sign out for them. Uh, uh, every time we would get one, we would have to sign it out. Um, of course, we didn't have to give it back, right? But I mean, it was just the fact that we had to go and literally, I mean, they weren't giving us a box, you know? Yes. Um, all of that equipment, uh, uh, that equipment was, was scarce and that was everywhere, you know? Because no one was prepared. All right. Now, um, as far as that PPO um, and the shortage, because I know that the shortage ran across the entire nation. You right. know, how did that shortage of the PPO affect the department? Mm -hmm. um, you know, to me personally, I, I, I mean, I, man, I had to use, I remember I was using almost, you know, the same face mask for, for a while. I mean, for a few days, I want to say, mm -hmm. um, if that was a case or, you know, they was just counted and, I mean, what what else were we gonna do, right? I mean, those those other cloth face masks and the other um, uh, non N95 uh, face masks are, I mean, are really not gonna fully protect you, right? I mean, yes, they they had the um, the sanitizing areas, of course. You know, through the PD, we've always had them anyway. Mm -hmm. um, the PD has had sanitizing areas um, in in various places of the of the of the police department. So. Okay. Now um, we did mention about the changes. Now was there changes to the procedures how you would arrest a person during this pandemic? Um, <laughs> the the only way or. I want to say that the only thing that changed was, you know, asking, uh, have you or anyone been in contact with COVID? Are you experiencing any fevers or this and that? But, you know, it, that was the, the 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 basic, right? But when when there was a an emergency call, 
There's no time for that. There's really no time for that to be questioning people and asking, well, what this, what that. I mean, you're a first responder, right? You must respond. Um, yes, they had the face mask and yes, they'll be wearing the gloves, but regardless, I mean, yeah. it's just, um, you, as a first responder, you're not, you're not prepared. No call is, no call is, um, I had the word, I had the word here, the tip of my tongue and I just lost it, lost my train of thought here that, um, there's no, there's, there's no time to react. Well, no, there's not one call that's the same, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. not one call. There's no routine call. It's not, no, not one call is the same. Every single call is different. So yes, the face mask, yes, the gloves. Okay, fine. But what if a glove breaks, you know? right there and then what if you're in a, in a struggle and you lose your face mask because you're in that struggle i mean what other protection are you going to have as a first responder right as as a police officer that's very true no. <laughs> there's just a lot it's it's not the same as if you're a doctor you're, you're you're suited up you know what you're doing you're you know but even then maybe they they experienced you know people that were um uh, that had maybe this mental disability, right? Um, and that couldn't control themselves and they needed to, they needed to um, um, cinch them down, you know, and, and, and stuff strange. like that. I don't know. Yes. Um, so an, another question in regards, I mean, I know that this whole embryo is about the COVID and, and throughout this time. Um, with the added stress of, of COVID, how did this affect you personally? Um, what did you do to maintain your stability? Um, My sanity. Not, your sanity, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I... I want to say that me personally, it, it, it was mainly, I, I, I have a lot going on almost daily in my life. And I have children that I go home to. I have the business going on, just things like that. And what I, what I started doing at home is I started, you know, just to be grateful that my, my, my children were, were home, right? Um, as a police officer, you work different hours, uh, different shifts. Um, as a detective, major crimes, you have to be out sometimes 12 or 13 hours, you know, and sometimes you just lose on that family time. So I took it as a, you know what, this is time to simmer down, to stay with my, my, my little one and just cuddle, right? Or go outside or do what she wants to do. I, I don't like board games. I don't like doing different things that she likes to do. And I sometimes I just have to budge, you know? But that was a way of, you know, um, de-stress right and unwinding um, and yes and definitely unwind and then maybe watch movies sometimes it was just say you know what well now we're we're at home right i mean it's my day off what, what are we gonna do where are we gonna go right yes. well let's watch a movie i don't think i've watched that many movies in, <laughs> in a while <laughs> <laughs> it was, yes. it was crazy you know i was forced to sit right especially when i was sick i was like uh what am i gonna do you know it feels super dizzy i i I can't be out and about. I can't, you know, um, I go and I go to the restroom and I'm all, you know, dizzy here, falling yeah. um, sit on the couch, you know, mm -hmm. sit with your little one. And that was that. I mean, I don't know what else. I mean, there was hardly anything to do out and about, but that was just time to be home. Yes. I think it's been like a reset button for a lot of people. Yes. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, this is a harder question is that did you lose any of your co-workers due to COVID? No, uh, we did not. Um, I'm grateful that we didn't. Uh, yes, a lot of them did become very ill. Um, I, I was one of them. I was 
very sick. Um, I'm not too sure if, if any of my coworkers ended up in the hospital. I didn't hear of any, um, but during those COVID times, we did lose, you know, two of my, um, my colleagues, but uh, that was something completely different, right? Um, but uh, it was pretty hard. <laughs> uh, but no, as far as COVID, no. Okay. Now, um, now this is where it's going to start getting intense. <laughs> During your pre-interview, you mentioned the obstacles you went through um, with your leave with Workman's Comp. Can you explain this story for us? Yes. So I, like I said uh, earlier, you know, I was this one person living in a bubble, right? Um, I was sanitizing everyone's uh, areas. Uh, there at the uh, it, it within my unit, uh, spraying uh, doorknobs, spraying phones, spraying desks, uh, spraying you know our, our the table that we would eat. We knew that we had to stay for, away from each other. We talk at a distance. Uh, um, I mean, just all of that, and then I was working the graveyard shift, like I said also earlier. So meaning that I mean I was already you know my second third week in graveyard you know into graveyard and um for the uh, not necessarily the police department but for the um workers comp to say that i did not contract the virus or that i didn't know where i had or the what where or what the source where the source was right or where i had um acquired the COVID was a, a shocker, right? I mean, I, I, I couldn't believe that I was hearing that from them. I, 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 I told them, I explained to them my regimen, what I was doing religiously. I explained to them the calls that I went to. I, I didn't have per se a case number, but I didn't have a case number. I mean, I wasn't at work. I was down sick. Um, but uh, I Till this day, I, I haven't gotten any response from the workers' comp. Um, I was told that I could um, that I can contest and that I could uh, push for it, and I had up to a year to uh, to push for the workers' comp. I really didn't want necessarily the money or get paid. I just didn't want my time taken away from me from my bank. I was out three weeks, give or take, and uh, for that to come out of my personal time, the time that I've built up was, I mean, it was just overwhelming, especially being sick, you know, here I was arguing with these people over the phone, you know, mm -hmm. sick. Um, but yeah, um, I, there was, and I'm not the only one, there was a lot of coworkers, I'm speaking on, you know, others behalf um, that weren't covered. There were some that were covered because, um, they had that specific case number or because the person that they came in contact with tested positive and that went uh, uh, that went that went straight to the PD okay yes. um, but I was like I was one of the first cases there at the police department I want to say not one of the first but one of the you know one of the the, the, the little cases that the PD had from the very beginning mm -hmm. um, and and for them not for them to say that I that they didn't know where you know source came from then I I I mean I just I I I didn't know what to do I I did I did figure it out myself I I after when I went back to work I got the case number I called them I gave them a case number so that they could reference back to and and I, they, I still just didn't get a response that must be really really tough and I don't yeah, and and like I I told you in the pre-interview, I wanted to add that um, I just I just couldn't help or bear the fact that you know civilians uh, civilians uh, were getting paid um, from grants, right? They were getting paid their two weeks that they were out, or maybe even three weeks. Um, and I just can't believe that first responders weren't respected by it. You know, it's just it's. It's aggravating um, that 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 they couldn't take care of us that way, and they still can't. You know, yes, some did pull through. Some went, some were were covered by workers' comp, but uh, a lot of us weren't. 
Right. And, and that actually goes into the next question that I was going to ask you. Were you put on paid leave? Were you offered compensation for your time off during your time contracting the COVID? And no, it came from my personal time, my bank, the time that I've acquired through my time at the PD. So your personal time was used, the, the time that you would use with your family or anything, that's what you had to use. Yes, exactly. Uh -huh. Wow. Do now do many of your fellow officers feel the same way as you do of the unfairness of of what has transpired because of this? Oh, yes, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Um, and I mean, I know that you like we talk about it, that you are a first responder and that, I mean, you're first on the scenes and everything. And you, like you say, at times you say you don't have time to even take the proper precautions when you're out there on the field. Now, how does it make you feel that you're getting so much pushback from this that putting your life on the line every single day? Mm hmm as far as as pushback as far as what you mean that the time or, or or yeah like being like not being able to get paid for for doing your job and oh. even though you know you contracted it there like they're needing specifics and everything and and they're just making it hard for you mm -hmm. yeah well like i said i just i it's 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 unbelievable you know that we're there to perform a duty, a job, something that, that no one's forcing us to do. There's plenty of other jobs here in the Valley. Ma many of them uh, pay even more or better, right? But we choose to be there. We choose to serve and we choose to protect. That's, that's what we're there. We signed up for that. We, we took an oath and we're there. And then for, for our own people not to protect us, that way but yet when something goes down we're the first ones to be called yeah, i don't it's, know <laughs> it's kind of like a slap in the face to you right right mm -hmm. now aside from you were there any other officers that are going through these same issues as you yes yes yeah and, and, and still, right? I mean, the ones that, that uh, respond uh, first, which are the patrol officers, they're, they have more exposure um, than I do. Yeah, because they're always out there on the field, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that you are a woman that is always on the go. How do you cope with the everyday stress and what do you do? as a family to de-stress. I know we touched on that a little bit earlier, but like, mm -hmm. I know that there's things aside from that, that you as a, a woman, a wife, uh, you know, don't go into certain details, right? But like, just what is it that you do for yourself? Mm -hmm. um, I try so hard. Um, I don't like to say this, but I do, I take work home, right? Because I, I, I know and I start to think, okay, what's what's next now when I get uh, after days off, what am I going to do? Uh, first thing in the morning, I'm going to do this and this and this. You can never plan. You can never plan ahead at the PD because <laughs> you have everything all planned out and, and then something happens, right? Um, and we must take off and drop what you're doing and let's go respond, right? But um, at at home, I what I've done is um, I keep busy. My mind keeps busy. That's the only thing that I can say that that I've kept my sanity because of that. I've kept busy. I I am not one to watch TV a lot, except for the days that I was completely sick and down. Um, but uh, just doing stuff around the house. Uh, chores um school now with my daughter you think that i have time to be thinking of of my case or my victim that's you know pending this pending that i 
I, I don't have the time to think about that. I completely delete and onto the new, um, onto the new um, uh, thing to do, right? Or onto mm -hmm. the new. Like you don't so dwell on my, my, my not I, yes to a certain extent when I'm home, but like I said, unwind and and I have to just delete and then it's it's mommy mode, right? When it's mommy mode, it's mommy mode. Mm -hmm. Um, when it's wife mode, it's wife mode. When my husband comes home, it's wife mode. I drop what I'm doing. I sometimes don't do what I do when he's not home. Okay, like my my daily activities when he's out. When he's gone for two weeks. Um, I cram everything that I'm, that I'm going to do when he's not home. I do like my shopping. I do, um, the, um, the extra cleaning at home, the extra organizing and stuff like that stuff that he doesn't see when he's home and he doesn't see it when he's home because I want to give my undivided attention to him. He wants me to sit down and then watch a movie or sit down and have dinner with him. That's something that I really rarely do, right? Because he's not home so things like that so when like you said when it's wife mode it's wife mode when it's mommy mode it's mommy mode um and it almost feels when it's teacher mode teacher mode now right um but i i i must remember that i'm not at work and that i'm at home so I, sometimes i just i talk to myself and i say you know you need to snap out of it right it work you're already clocked out and you're you're on this mode now so that's the way i do it that, that's Every time good they say, how do you do it how do you do it i i'm serious i i've been asked so many times how do you do it i don't know how you do it i don't know how you make time uh there's a, there's a schedule i have a, a calendar on my phone and a calendar in my office and a calendar in my home office and all of those, I mean, I've got, I've got schedules. That's that's the the, the only way I work. Yeah. And it works for you. So it, and it's it's what keeps you balanced. You know. Yes. <laughs> so um, back to your work environment. What um, what has by any chance is the atmosphere different or like do you, do you feel like anxiety in there at work by any chance right now like during the COVID times you mean yes ma'am yes oh yeah um i mean there's always stress right at work anyway it's not like oh well here we go there's you know added stress now right but yeah definitely um just like everybody else i mean we're, we're human beings right i mean we're humans uh, we do get scared too. We we fear we fear for our life. Yes, um, and that was uh, a lot of added stress. Yeah. Now, um, since COVID started, have you had to take on any extra work duties because of it? Mm. No. Um, no, I don't, I can't remember of, of another duty that I was assigned because of COVID. No, everything's been, like I said, we've been working. We've never stopped. Okay. Now going back to, we had discussed about the vaccine earlier, is the PD offering vaccines to their employees and would you be willing to, to take it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. They offered it from the very beginning. I mean, the, the the PD, I mean, first responders were the first to be offered the vaccine um, that I, <laughs> I did not take it. I did not, uh, I am not a recipient of the vaccine. I didn't want to, that's just by choice. Um, I just, I felt like I, I built, now mind you, I'm not, <laughs> I'm no scientist. I'm not no doctor, nothing, but um, I, I just felt like I've already come down with COVID. I built those antibodies. That's just my mentality. I could be wrong, but to me was, no, I don't need the vaccine. I don't want it. And if we're not being forced to take it, then I don't want it. Okay, that is understandable. 
Um, now, what precautions is your PD taking to keep you safe? Uh, equipment, um, protective equipment, right? Sanitizing mm -hmm. stations. They also have, um, I forgot to mention that, uh, areas to, uh, you know, check your temperature. Um, at one point they had um, uh, different uh, 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 points in the or specific areas that uh, they had uh, people or civilians checking uh, temperatures as soon as we would go into the PD, but just that, I mean, there's gloves and that, you know, in various places, but that was pretty much it. Just the norm. Okay. Now, one of the last questions uh, in reference to your work, um, what else do you feel is unjust when it comes to being a first responder and how could it be made better? At, at the police department specifically or what? Yes, ma'am. Um, you know, I, it, it, we, every, every police department, every agency is different. Every police department or, or every agency or every city has its own budget, right? So, uh, we can, I, I can't, I can't specifically say, or, you know, how come we haven't gotten this for ourselves or how come this, I don't know their budgets, right? But I do wanna say that um, at the agency where, where I'm at, um, I feel like we're falling behind with the technology. <laughs> I feel that there's a lot of stuff uh, or equipment that we could be using and that the uh, city, the agency could afford, you know, but that's just me. There's things that are, there's things that the city in itself does for the citizens, you know, that I feel like it's just a waste of money. But then again, you know, that's just my opinion. <laughs> I believe that that money could be used towards other equipment and other safety measures that we could potentially use to protect our people, right? Um, but that's what I believe, that's what I say. Okay. Now, now we're getting close to the ending of, of the interview, but I just have a few more questions to ask you. And um, uh, now to close, I'll ask you some final questions. Are you satisfied with the local response to COVID-19 in the McAllen Hidalgo County area? No. As far as the way that people are responding to it, is that what you're saying? No. Uh, any any local response, however you want to answer. Uh -huh. No, I, I, from the very beginning, I, of course, like I said, I, I didn't think anything of it. We didn't know what to think, right? Everybody was just confused. It was different, new to us, right? But um, as soon as I started to take precautions, I mean, I, 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 I started to, right? As soon as I need, needed to get on it, I, I started to use all precautions. I still did from the very beginning anyway, right? So if I would enter a, a place where it was, um, um, I'm gonna say like, not sanitary, I would mm -hmm. get home and I would, you know, I would wash off, I would get in the shower and I mean, just things like that, right? I mean, that was just second nature, right? But when we started doing all of this, I, I, I started to take those, those measures um and um i lost my train of thought again oh, here yeah, you're good that's why i've got a dog in the background that's why Sorry. <laughs> it's okay <laughs> no, now um are you satisfied with the state response to covid19 led by texas no, because I believe that we needed more time to shut down. And that's what I was going to say right now when before these dogs came out. Um, I sorry about that. Um, the I I believed that we needed more time out. Uh, time out meaning time out inside your home. Uh, um, 
like the lockdown. quarantine shelter in place and whatnot we needed more time we everybody everybody needed more time i mean people are going crazy you know buying stuff um, um storing all these things i don't know what they did to it but uh, uh there was there's more things that people can do in their in their homes a lot of more things you know back in the day you you there was a, a lot that could be done without this technology so I didn't see why people just couldn't stay longer at home. You know, the time when the shelter in place um, took place uh, or was out there, right? Um, I remember seeing the streets and it was just dead. It was ghost town, right? But yeah. I felt I felt peace though. Mm -hmm. It was just that inner peace that people were staying put inside their homes. Mm -hmm. And I wish it would have lasted longer, not a little, but longer, just longer. People stay home. I just really wish that that would have happened. Yeah. Complete shutdown. And I truly believe, I truly believe that if we would have had a complete shutdown for a while, at least a month, you know, or, or, or longer, but complete shutdown. I'm not, I mean, not anybody leave their homes or anything like that. We would have healed. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and I mean, I, I understand that piece because I live off of a major street and by 10 o'clock at night, there's no cars. And it was so peaceful. And I was like, wow, it kind of makes you want to sit outside. <laughs> yes. Yes. It was it was peace. Mm -hmm. It was that inner peace, especially when driving to work, to and from work. Mm -hmm. Now, are you satisfied with the current national response to COVID led by President Biden and his administration? Mm -hmm. I'm not very into politics. And um, so I, I am not going to say much about it, but um, I do want to say, just as I said right now, I wish that there would have been more of a shelter in place. Okay. Um, I wouldn't have, have lost fa a family member, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but that's, that's that. <laughs> okay. If you had the power to respond to COVID-19 with policies, law, or workplace decisions, what would you do differently, if anything? policies and laws but like if you had the power if you had the power to respond to COVID-19 like with policies laws or any workplace decisions what would you do differently mm -hmm. if anything mm -hmm. talking about workplace or uh, in general because just like I said I mean I just wish we would have had a complete shutdown longer longer lockdowns um a shelter in place um as far as policies i i don't know maybe more coverage for first responders more protection towards us um i mean nurses doctors overworked i just want to say more protection i mean the government could have uh, done a little bit you know a, a little better by by helping us out more by protecting us more maybe even right now, um, you know, all this COVID recovery credit crap, I'm sorry, that's going on and everything, people fighting for it. Why not a credit towards first responders, right? I mean, I don't know if I'm, I'm answering your question there, but. No, that, that makes complete sense, you know, cause honestly, me being like a person, a regular person, a citizen, I believe that you all should have gotten something additional because I was under the impression that you all being a first responders, that you all were at least being compensated for something, you know, and then to find out that it's not the case, you know, right. that it's kind of disheartening, like knowing that, you know, knowing that every day you all lay your lives on the line to protect us, the citizens, you know, and you all aren't being taken care of, but you're expected to take care of us, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. that, that's what's a little disheartening to me, mm -hmm. you know? 
Now, the, the last question, I know we've been running a lot. I mean, it's, it's wonderful talking to you. I've always said, you know, um, are there any other stories or experiences you would like to share with me that I have not asked you about? Mm -hmm. And um, the, the, in reference to COVID, right? Yes, ma'am. Or just in general. Yeah, in reference to COVID, no, I think I, I pretty much covered um, what I wanted to say and what I was planning on saying as far as the, the COVID. Um, I wasn't prepared for my introduction though. <laughs> but uh, for uh, as, far as, as far as COVID is concerned, um, no, I mean, I know we all went through stressors and we continue to do so. I mean, just the fact of, um, you know, having to to stress over, okay, um, um, how am I gonna, how am I gonna uh, take my daughter to my mother's house so that she can watch her and take care of her through all of this pandemic? If I can't be close to my parents, it was that right there. And then I, if I'm close to my daughter, then that means I'm already close to my parents anyway, right? Because she's around them. So that right there was a lot of stress. Once I'm going to tell you this, once we came, all of us came down with COVID and we all recovered, thank God. It was pretty hard. Um, it was just like a relief, a major relief. Um, a major weight off my shoulders. I didn't feel like I was living in this bubble anymore, that I wasn't walking in eggshells, right? So um, when that was over and done with, I felt like I, okay, I'm, I'm done, right? That's not, not to say that I was still around all these people and, and, and partying and, and going here and there. No, I had the specific amount of people and I, I had them counted. I knew who I was visiting and they knew who they were visiting with. And that was it. Until this day, I only have that certain amount of people that come to my house and that I know that they're protecting um, each other. And regardless, and still, I mean, till this day, we still kind of just, you know, just a little uh, distance and not as, as close as, 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 as we were, right? Yeah. Um, but hopefully this 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 will pass. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it will pass eventually, I know. And and even now it still feels like it's fresh, you know, it still mm -hmm. feels like it's a taboo subject, you know, and it's it's rough, you know, and there's still people that are, are out of jobs because of it. And every day it's gonna be a learning experience, you know, until we mm -hmm. get out of this pandemic. <laughs> Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, well, uh, Mrs. Legacy, um, I do want to thank you for participation in the UTRGV Voices Oral History Project. And, and I, once again, I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. I know that it's been kind of hectic. We had to reschedule and everything. But I just need you to know it's greatly appreciated. And all of your your stories and your information is going to be um, recorded and it, it will it will live on like they say it lives on with us even when we're not here you know mm -hmm. so I do appreciate you taking the time um, to speak with me today and for taking time to do this interview with me I, I really do appreciate it I'm very welcome which is why I'm Miss Legacy Yes, you are Miss Legacy. <laughs> and you will live on as Miss Legacy through the process yeah. of the pandemic. <laughs> well, yes, Mrs. Legacy, uh, once again, uh, is there anything else that you have for me uh, before we do um, close out this call? No, I think we covered, I think we covered a lot of um, COVID related questions. Yes, ma'am. And I and, And, and like I said, all your information, your stories, your information is, is wonderful. And, and again, I do appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to, to let me have a part of you to be able to be recorded, you know? No, no problem. 
All righty. <laughs> well, it was my pleasure again, Mrs. Legacy. Uh, we will keep in contact. <laughs> yes, so, for sure. Yeah, um, thank you so much again. And you have yourself a wonderful rest of the evening. And, and I appreciate you once more. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. We'll have a good night. Yes, ma'am. Bye-bye.